Hey everybody, I am back. Just thought I'd start the video with something kind of cute. A little bit of a head boo from the older cat there. Uh, anyway, so it is Tuesday the 26th. I really gotta get a calendar and look at it. But anyway, I wanted to do kind of like a midweek writing check-in. Um, it's kind of like a general update of what I'm working on. Traffic. I'm trying to work on not being bothered by the traffic. That's one thing that I need to work on. Uh, but in terms of writing related projects, I've got a lot on the go right now. Uh, oh, cat you jumped onto the bed, <laughs> of course, another cat. Um, so I'm going to walk over to my desk here. And so I had a few ideas for things I wanted to talk about in this particular video. First, I'm going to put you down. I'm well, not put you down. I don't want to make fun of you. There you are. Uh, so as I said, I've got a few different ideas for this video and what I want it to be about. Um, so I'm just going to kind of quickly run through a couple of things, a couple of updates I wanted to make, and uh, we'll just kind of go from there. Look who showed up. Look. What are you doing? Why are you always here when I'm trying to do things? Okay, so she's decided she's just going to sit here on my laptop while I talk. That's fine. It is what it is. First update probably the most important update that I'll give you today uh, concerns my next book, which is coming out on Monday, August 1st, which if you live in Canada, that's a statutory holiday. And really what better time to buy a book and support an independent author than on a statutory holiday when you could be outside, maybe reading in the park somewhere, or, you know, trying to avoid social interaction at a barbecue. I'm just giving you some ideas, okay? Like if you're not really an outgoing kind of person, you don't really like small talk, if you prefer to sit in the corner and read a book, now's a really good time to read a book. So, no pressure or anything, but um, yeah, next Monday my next book, my latest book, Our Infinite Depths, comes out in paperback and ebook formats. Are you, uh, <laughs> you watching? I got a cant in my head, like, what is that? Uh, so that's the first update. The... We live next to a major intersection and all the trucks come through here all the time. Um, and during the summer we also have farming equipment that comes through here, like combine harvesters and stuff like that. It's quite the problem when you're trying to work in peace and quiet and you can't and you need the windows open because it's stuffy inside if you keep the windows closed and you just get the constant noise from the traffic coming through all the time. Update number two is, um, okay, I was, uh, <laughs> I'm going to reach over here and I'm going to grab something. Because when I originally started outlining book four of my series, I, I wasn't really sure how long it was going to take me to write the first draft, so I gave myself a really long timeline, like a very far away deadline I said okay I should have the first draft done by December 31st of this year and now we are in July almost August and my first draft is 76,000 words which is you know obviously very close to being done for a while I was really worried because I didn't have that many ideas and I thought oh gee I don't know how to flesh this out I'm not sure if I'm going to have to start over or if I can just you know power through and then I'll try to fix it in the revisions but around 20,000 words, I started to get a lot of new ideas and they started to multiply and kind of flesh out and expand. And then it got to the point where I was like, okay, these chapters are way too long and this book is going to be a bit of a monstrosity. So just goes to show why the outline is a guideline. It's not a strict set of rules when you're writing. All right, so you can see on March 5th of this year, I basically came up with a very rough publishing schedule, uh, basically from one month to the next, what I wanted to accomplish. So if you come down here to July, um, WCG, word count goal. That's why <laughs> I love when I come up with acronyms and then I completely forget what they mean. Anyway, so by this time, my first draft should have been 23,000 words and now it is 76,000 words, so clearly a lot more than I was anticipating. Uh, you can see how I just kind of spaced out all those different goals over the month. Um, so 
as I said, I was not expecting it to progress as quickly as it has. Oh, are you leaving? No, you're not leaving. Of course not. But that's okay. Um, you know, there's still quite a bit of work to do and quite a bit of revision. So I'm okay with being ahead of schedule at this point because I think I'm going to need that extra time. As I said, I really want to get this first draft done. I'm taking a few days off from it though because I... I've written so many words in such a short period of time. I've written like, I think 20,000 words in less than a month, uh, which for me is kind of unprecedented. And I know people don't like that word, unprecedented, but <laughs> it really is because I am a total writer. But apparently my brain just had some ideas and then had a few more ideas and here we are. So, um, while I am taking a break from book four, I've actually been going back and I wanted to make a few small, small changes <laughs> to the first book in my series because I was going through it the other day looking for a couple of details and I noticed a few very minor grammatical errors. I want the series to reflect my writing ability as accurately as possible so I'm going back and I'm just making a few little adjustments here and there uh, which is great because there are a couple of things that I just sort of blanked out and forgot completely in the series so it's been a nice little refresher and a much needed break from the drafting I'm trying to see what time it is almost three o'clock okay I should go make a pot of coffee because Dan will be home soon and inevitably he will want coffee before he works on his YouTube channel. So I'm going to pop over to the kitchen and get that started. And then when, when I come back, we will talk more about what I'm working on and what I'm planning to do once Our Infinite Depths is completely officially live and book four is done. All right, let's see if she comes with me. Come on, little bear. Come on. You going to come too? All right, let's see if they follow me. Uh, turn on the light. Oh, here comes one. Oh, here come two. All right, they're both coming over here. You want these? Yes, we do. All right, turn off the light here. Fun fact about us, we have three coffee makers. I'm not sure why or how we ended up with three coffee makers, but we do. Okay, I am back in my office slash the bedroom. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> and, um, oh, wait. Are you gonna scratch? <laughs> yes. Yes, he's gonna scratch. I just want to make a video. I just have a few minutes to myself. This is what having kids is like, right? But 10 times worse. This is why I don't have kids. All right, so we're going to add the cat to the list of things we need to learn to ignore. Back to business. In terms of what I'm planning to work on next, um, this was kind of, this was an idea that I had and I kind of ran it past you guys a little bit on Twitter. I don't know what it would be. Uh, kind of like um, a revisiting old work in projects. Work in projects? Work in progress? <laughs> Who knows? Um, kind of like um, old projects that I may come back to or I may shelve entirely. Not every single book needs to be published, right? And that's the thing that I think is really hard for a lot of authors to accept, that you can put so much time and effort and research into something only to realize that it's not the book you were meant to write. Also, please try and ignore the coffee maker burbling so enthusiastically in the background. Um, apparently, peace and quiet is not something that we get a lot of around here. So I have the two manuscripts right here. Um, this first one uh, was my camp, no, not camp. It was just regular NaNoWriMo 2017 project. And some of you may recognize it because I talked about it like I was going to publish it. Yes, The Watching Game. Which turned out to be my longest project by word count. Um, and in fact, I think I wrote it down here. Hang on. Let me open it up. It actually turned out really nice. Um, I think I, I didn't publish it 
through Staples. I think that would have been too expensive. I think I went to Lulu.com and I published it as a private project so nobody else could see it or buy it or anything like that. So you open it up and it's just like a very standard, uh, you no know, front matter kind of thing. Not a whole lot going on there. So it was just for me, it didn't need to be that formal. And then on the second page, I had all of the stats and specs and stuff like that. Uh, like the title, the genre, the total word count, the ending word count, number of pages, number of chapters, the year, um, how many words I wrote per day because it was NaNoWriMo, I was kind of keeping track of that. Uh, outline, yes or no? No. <laughs> I feel like that, um, you know, that really tells me a lot about why I struggled with this book. Uh, attached. I don't know what that means. Oh, I think it means did I attach the outline? Okay, good. And the answer to that question is also no. I really love the characters. Um, <laughs> I kind of liked the premise. I think that was the problem. I think I had too many variables in this story and it was just too much to keep track of. And it just sort of grew uncontrollably like a tumor and it just got to the point where it was like, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I'm too far into it. I've committed too much. I have to finish it. And that was my mistake. So that learning experience was so, so, so valuable for subsequent projects where I wanted to do something really super ambitious. And I had to keep reminding myself that if you go too big, sometimes you, you run into problems, you know, and that's not a bad thing. You know, there's nothing wrong with writing really big, ambitious books, but uh, for me personally, I'm used to something that's a little bit smaller and more manageable. Oh, I think somebody's home. Hello? Hello? I'm filming. Oh. <laughs> no, that's okay. You can come in. One of these days, when we have our own place, I'm gonna have a writing shed in the backyard and it's gonna be so quiet. Well, writing slash recording shed, right? Studio, whatever. So you may be wondering, what exactly is this book about? Good question, I'll tell you. Because I had the foresight. See, at least I did have some foresight. But I had the foresight to put the blurb on the back. And since I'm going to assume you probably cannot read that, I will read it to you. Um, and it, the blurb made it sound way more exciting and put together than it actually was. So I think that's why I keep coming back to it because I'm like, wow, I really sold myself on the story. But then when you get to the inside, to the actual meat and potatoes of the plot, you realize, wow, this is like, this is a lot of story. It's a lot of story. So the blurb says, Sisters Raven and River Carter have scant memory of life before the compound, a subterranean facility housing the last of Earth's inhabitants. Bound by a desire to preserve the family legacy, they are called upon to oversee the compound's medical clinic, even if it means that River, a recognized gifted, must endure tireless discrimination at the hands of the compound's trigger-happy guards and Cliff Connors, the authority's power-hungry president. As resources dwindle and desperation grows, they soon learn the real reason for the compound's existence. Aiding their investigation is Ash Walker, the president's elusive and widely misunderstood son who promises answers about their father's disappearance, for a price. Now, with nowhere to go but back to the surface, the sisters find themselves embroiled in a, in a bitter feud, one that will have catastrophic consequences for humanity and ultimately alter the landscape of their family forever. That sounds pretty cool, right? Uh, it's kind of like an adult sci-fi fantasy dystopian story uh, and I keep coming back to it because as I said I like the characters I really like Dr. Carter well Raven um, you know she's very <laughs> she's very um, you know confident and she doesn't take crap from anybody um, but she's also very, uh, I don't want to use the word vindictive, you know, she doesn't try to get even with people, but by the same token, she also has a bit of a bone to pick with Cliff 
and his guards, and so she's kind of subtly picking off the guards who pick on her sister, who try to make her life a hell, that kind of thing. So she's uh, she's not one to be trifled with. And I really like writing female characters who are headstrong and intelligent and strong and brave and all that. Really? I need a coffee or something, honestly, so... <laughs> Two minutes, I will come back and we'll talk about the other project. So the second shelved project that I wanted to talk about is this one. This one here, um, I'm not really sure what genre it is. I don't think I really knew at the time. <laughs> but this was my NaNoWriMo 2018 project. And I think it ended up being a little bit shorter than The Watching Game. Let me check. Oh wow, like a lot shorter. Okay, so so this book ended up being 79,668 words and the watching game turned out to be... I'm so glad I did this. And go back and see all the progress I've made. <sighs> 97,018 words. Okay, yeah. Now I remember how long it took me to do that. So, what did I say here on the front page, the very front page, what did I say? It was a new adult contemporary. New adult. Well, we all know how everybody feels about new adult books. Ah, okay, so this was 218 pages, 28 chapters. I wrote 1,252 words per day for a total word count of almost 80,000. Again, no outline. I'm starting to see the pattern. You know what, guys? I keep thinking my next book I'm going to wise up. I'm going to use an outline. I never learn. Forced to return to the small town in which she grew up, 24-year-old Isabel Turner finds herself faced with the demons that never left among them her manipulative ex-boyfriend, Cole. She came home for one reason and one reason only, to keep her family from falling apart. In the wake of her brother's accident, Isabel is determined to put her tumultuous past behind her. However, for Cole, seeing Isabel again is proof that she was meant to be his. Consumed by a dangerous passion and fueled by, the refusal to, by her refusal to reignite an old flame, he makes it his mission to win her back and this time he won't lose her again. So Isabel, in the story, she was actually a recovering drug addict, and um, I'd never written a character like that before, so I th think that was part of the reason why I decided not to publish, because I didn't really feel comfortable writing that kind of character convincingly. So she comes back to the small town, because so many of my stories are set in small towns, and she, um, she, she tried to make peace with her past, and she ends up meeting um, a guy there who was also forced to come to the small town, but he didn't grow up there. He was just forced to come there for personal reasons, and they start to bond and stuff like that. But then, of course, Cole senses this guy might be a competition for him, and he's really not a fan of Izzy dating anybody else, even though they're not a couple. So um, then she, he starts giving um, Izzy's new boyfriend a hard time. I thought about coming back to this one a couple of times because it's a genre that I'm really familiar with, and it's not, you know, a hundred thousand words, which is a little bit easier to fix. Um, but I don't know. I I don't think it's one of my best stories. I don't think it's one that I necessarily want to improve. And you know, I think I think as authors, we need to be honest with ourselves about when there is a story that is just not for us. You know, and I'm not saying that we should limit ourselves. I think if if you have an idea and you want to pursue it and you're ready to do the research to write those characters well, go for it. Like, who's stopping you? But I think it's also equally important to recognize when we just don't know enough to have an opinion or to tell a certain story about a certain issue. I don't think I'll come back to this story or even the watching game. I just, I don't know. I think it's time to put certain books behind me and be okay with that. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I always say I'm not going to make the video too long, and then I go back and I edit it, and it's like two and a half hours. <laughs> this one's not going to be two and a half hours, don't worry. Uh, but anyway, people, I think I'm going to wrap this one up, and um, 
try to get to work a little bit. I have a lot of things I need to do for the first book in my series in terms of trying to clean that up and um, also to just getting ready for our Infinite Depth release. Also, I have to edit this, okay? I'm not streaming, I'm just filming a bunch of clips and then I'll put them into iMovie later and edit them and clean them up and then I have to do a thumbnail and then I have to do a description. So I am gonna sign off for now. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more of my content, don't forget to subscribe, the little bell thing or whatever it is. I don't know. Um, I hope that you guys are having a good day and I will catch you on the next one. Bye. Before I go, you wanna see something ridiculous? Look at this. She's sleeping. <laughs> I'm done filming. And what is she doing? She's sleeping. I'll catch you guys later.